Shadow Wrist. Greetings, I'm Shadow, and in this episode of Fantasy Rearmed, we're doing a bit of a sci-fi twist, where instead of looking at the best weapons for a fantasy race to use, we're going to be looking at the best type of weapons for a giant robot to use. Now, giant robots are kind of a staple in many pop culture properties, especially anime, but giant robots have been featured in films of the past. I remember there was this old movie called Robot Wars, which was quite a lot of fun, just giant robots as well. And of course the most recent giant robot kind of thing we saw in recent memory is Pacific Rim. But if we were to try and analyze this from a realistic perspective, are some of the weapons used in these other, in anime and movies and things, would they actually be the best type of weapons? Like what really would be? Well, there's a couple of things we need to figure out to establish the context. For instance, how big are the robots and what are they fighting? So I think the best way to do it is try and look at it in two standard sizes. The first standard size for a giant robot will be maybe uh, the size of a two or three story house, okay? That's a more conservative, you know, kind of size for a giant robot. But then you have the really big giant robots, or like, like the size of Gundams or Jaegers from Pacific Rim. These two different sizes actually affects the type of usable weapons in a very significant way. And one of the first things that we do need to just kind of address about the whole idea of giant robots, and hate to do this, but it's just to, you know, if we were to look at this realistically, the material strengths that exist in, say, the materials we can work with in the real world, there's no real material we could use that would enable these robots, especially the ones the size of like skyscrapers and stuff, the Jaegers and Gundams, there'd be no material strong enough to maintain the stresses that would come upon them in movement. We could make something that could stand still, but do you know there's a reason, well, there's a lot of reasons why buildings don't move. But say if there was a reason to try and make buildings move, we would run into a huge amount of problems, like really, okay? When you increase things in size, the important things increase with it like inertia, okay? Now, when I'm standing up and my legs move from underneath me, there's not nearly as much mass above me to uh, cause resistance, and so my upper body can move with it. But in actual honesty, you kind of lean into your walk and then you step out and gain your balance and you move forward like that. But there is still a measure of kind of stress where my bottom body is pulling my upper body. Now, if you look at a building, right, like a skyscraper, and you have the bottom move, okay, what would happen mo more often than not, okay? Okay, unless it's moving incredibly slow. If it moved with any measure of speed, the bottom would move out and uh, they would kind of pull out the, the base of the building and the top would just kind of not go with it, but it would just fall down, okay, it would break. Uh, there's not enough strength to maintain that type of stress. Now, you could reinforce it to a certain extent, but when you get to the level of stresses that you see giant robots go under, like jumping, for instance, say if a giant robot jumped and landed, like there's no materials in the world that could really maintain the compress, like the legs would just crash, break off, and then fall apart. So the way that you have to get around these real world limitations for giant robots is to make fictional materials that are ultra lightweight and ultra strong, okay? And when I say ultra lightweight, this thing would still weigh insane amounts, okay? But it, just because of the, the amount of material in them, the, this lightweight material, when you multiply it enough, it still gets pretty heavy. Because what's heavier than a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? Well, guess what? They still weigh a ton. The just volume of fe feathers would have to be much higher than the volume of brick because the brick is denser. So anyway, there would have to be other kind of things in play to enable these super giant robots. Say like an energy field or shield thing that can help m hold it together or that this energy field could be the very thing that causes it to move. This is the same kind of thing that we talked about in my video on the best weapons for giants. When you double something size, you're not doubling its weight, you're increasing its internal volume by a factor of eight. It's eight times as heavy as it was in just doubling its size. The strength of material runs into a big problem. And like with giants, like actual with our fleshy fantasy giants, their legs would need to be really thick and their bone density would have to be wide, thick, heavy and stuff like that. And so an actual giant robot, the legs would have to be really chunky, but then as soon as it starts moving and moving around, like Imagine if a giant robot threw a punch, right? It throws a punch like this. The amount of weight and mass and inertia that is now moving forward could be so great that there's not enough structural strength to hold the torso to the legs and it could just break off and fly forward, okay? Inertia, it's a thing, it exists. Oh, by the way, the shooting off this thing is 
is really stupid. Like, like you shoot. Um, Martian successor Nadesco, was it? Had like a shooting fist giant robot kind of mecha thing. It's, it's dumb. No. That's also in that animated thing. Um, what was it? Big Hero 6. That's the one. Again, shooting fists. I don't see why shooting fists is dumb. You could lose your fist. You don't want to lose your fist. Just have something else that shoots off. Like a missile. Something that explodes. But if we can just say, okay, ultra strong material, ultra light material, let's just pretend you could make a giant robot. The problem is, and this is why I wanted to talk about it, is that these same issues exist with the type of weapons you use. And so you could try and answer it with an ultra strong and ultra light material, because let's, for instance, give an example of swords. If you were to create a sword of the appropriate size for a robot that's either two or three stories high, let alone a skyscraper, just a sword that big, okay? As soon as soon as you hit anything with it, there is so much weight and mass in this sword that for, for if it was made out of steel, it would mangle the edge, it would bend or snap really quickly. You could not make a giant weapon out of steel. It would have to be, again, a super advanced material. And I guess we can do that. We're in science fiction territory, so giant robots, uh, and if there's a material, but the question is then, how strong and also how heavy because the weight of a weapon is going to impact how much damage it can do. The other thing is, is what you're fighting, okay? If you're fighting another robot and the robot is made out of a super light but yet super strong material similar to the weapons that the other robot is using, well, to me, it would almost seem like striking at a fully armoured knight with a sword just on the plates. And this is a robot, it's all plate armour essentially. I don't see how much damage you would do. If the sword is really heavy, that changes things considerably. The blade of a sword actually has very little mass in them. Remember, the average weight of a one-handed sword is one kilogram. It's really light. And most of the weight is actually focused in around the handle to give you more tip control. Swords don't need a huge amount of weight to do devastating cuts. That's why they have a very thin, fine, sharp edge. But that is cutting against flesh, okay? When you're coming up against metal, that's a problem. And so if a sword doesn't have much mass for a robot, it's not going to do much damage to another robot. If you're fighting a creature, a giant creature, say Pacific Rim, fleshy kaiju kind of things, well then a sword actually might be quite useful. And I just got to say, Pacific Rim, the first movie, the fact that they pull out their blade in their thing, like as one of the last resorts is... There's a lot of stupid in that movie. It's fun. It's a fun movie, but my goodness, there's a lot of stupid in that. Why didn't they lead with that? Why did they save the sword until last? It's just baffling. I mean, there are shots of them literally punching these monsters, all right? Which means if they just had the sword out and they were, able, were making so much contact, they would have killed this thing ages before the end of that fight. Come off it. Seriously, when I was watching that movie and they pulled that sword out of their butt at that point in the fight, I was like, what the hell? Come off it! I don't get it. I mean, I know these. there, there are smart people who work on movies, okay? And I, I, I don't want to insult their intelligence, but it really makes me wonder, how could you not think of something so obvious as that? All right, rant over. Going back to what I was saying. Swords against uh, monstrous, fleshy kind of creatures. Look, if it's ultra light, ultra strong, a sword is a great pick because a sword has a lot of unique benefits over other types of weapons. For in certain contexts or, or circumstances. You see, a sword has a very long cutting ratio, which means it's easy to cut, it's very versatile, it's good at thrusting, good at cutting, which gives you more options in combat. Much better than an axe. An axe has huge biting power, but if you're a giant robot, you would assume that there's a lot of bite in this strike already. You, you would assume that they operate under super strong conditions already. It's a giant robot, for crying out loud. Now, you might say, what about a giant hammer or, like, mallet? I mean, that's a similar thing to a club. It's kind of lumped in all together, there would be more weight concentration with a hammer or maul mallet-like weapon when you increase the scale to, you know, giant robot levels. But I can't really see those being any more effective than uh, a giant club or a club-like sword as well. And again, the advantage with swords is the cutting ratio. You can hit them down on the bottom of it or the top of the blade. You can throw so there's more, you know, more reach. So giant swords still went out in that regard. I've shared my opinions on flails in my video and ramping that up to giant levels levels is also a big no, so giant flails are out. I mean, if reach is an issue, maybe a pole-like bladed weapon could be quite effective. 
What's interesting about this, just on a side note, uh, the Gundam series sidesteps the whole issue completely just by giving their giant robots energy weapons. They're essentially lightsabers. They're called beam sabers in the translation. By the way, I own the entire series of Gundam Wing. That was around when I was a teenager. Great series. And Gundanium must be the super material. But the thing is, only the Gundams are made out of Gundanium, and you're not really told what the other mobile suits are made out of giant robots, and if they're not made out of Gundam and they're made out of normal materials, the same problems should exist as what I mentioned before. But as I was saying, if there are legitimate material limitations for giant swords, uh, and you have science fiction, you can just say, you know, hand wavy thing, energy swords, because of science fiction technology, it's a great option. Energy swords, absolutely, because energy swords presumably can be scaled up without nearly as many problems as uh, other things. Now, I have videos dedicated to energy swords. The one I would suggest is my one where I say the problems with lightsabers, because I talk about energy swords in general, and I even share a concept idea of how I think you could hand wave, you know, MacGuffin, pseudoscience, and energy sword that is more plausible and realistic than other ones like the lightsaber. Because the question would be, how would these energy swords operate? If they operate through melting, well that would depend on how resistant your opponents are to burning type attacks. If the material these giant robots are made out of are super strong and super light, you could say are super resistant to uh, plasma, for instance, if these weapons are plasma contained, which is a bad way to do a, an energy sword in my opinion. My own design is different, and I think that would actually be far more effective against you know, giant robots and strong, dense materials, even if it's lightweight, but also strong, can't be dense if it's like bedding. And if that's the case, well then yeah, you would want to be very wary of giant energy weapons that has the capacity to slice another giant robot in half. And if you have a weapon that can slice a giant robot in half, well, that would be hugely devastating. There is an important question that I probably should have led in in regards to all this. And by the way, if you can slice a giant robot in half, you'll be able to slice a giant monster in half as well. So that means that it's just equally as effective, maybe even more so against the fleshy monsters. But going back to the thing I should have probably mentioned and led in with it, is why would you need an energy weapon if you're in a science fi setting? In a science fiction setting, you presumably have projectile weapons of insane power. So why do you need melee weapons? I actually, again, addressed this in my, uh, I think it was the problem with lightsabers video again, because same issue exists. I mean, even if you're in a sci-fi setting and you're not in a giant robot, you're just a regular person, why use melee weapons instead of projectile weapons? Best and most elegant answer is shields, of course. If you, if, if there is a simple mechanical uh, sci-fi in-world explanation that these melee weapons can circumvent shields because it's so close range where projectile weapons can't, Perfect answer right there. Now you're in a situation where melee weapons are suddenly far more useful. When it comes to like monsters, well that's difficult because do monsters have shields? I mean, Godzilla can do energy things and so he has some type of inherent resistance because of his internal power, whatever, to projectile weapons. And so that could be some type of thing if the monsters you're fighting are resistant to projectile for some sci-fi monster reason, right? Again, that could then mean melee weapons should come in. So, sorry it took so late, but that's an important thing to consider. Why are you even using melee weapons? But if you're in a situation with melee weapons, this is our discussion. Which ones would be best for it? And it's a very complex thing because we've been talking about uh, material strength, we've been talking about the resistance of your opponents you're fighting, and we're talking about energy weapons now. But if you can use energy weapons, a sword-like weapon seems to be very effective. You'll get reach, you get higher cutting ratio, you get versatility in thrusting and cutting, and the only other variant is maybe similar type of energy weapon on a big pole, turn it into a pole arm, right, and get more reach. But if energy weapons are not really, you know, restricted in their reach, you can just do a sword-like energy weapon that has a longer beam. Because as soon as you put it on a pole, uh, the pole is now very, like, vulnerable to being cut in half. You would assume an energy weapon can't cut another energy weapon in half, that's kind of their point, uh, but the actual handle operating thing, so I would say staff-like energy weapons, or a staff that produces an energy weapon at the end, probably not the best pick still swords. But if you can't use energy weapons, again, comes back to the material properties. I have a video talking about how super giant swords can be effective. More detail in that video, and I'll only paraphrase a small thing that I mentioned there, is the fact that if you don't have a super advanced material, or you have a mildly advanced material that isn't invulnerable, a sword, a giant sword, will lose its edge very quickly. And it would basically operate like a giant club, which isn't a terrible thing if it has a decent amount of weight in it, okay, smacking another giant robot or giant monster with a really long club-like weapon can be very devastating, especially with the, with the mass and sizes we're talking about, 
the inertia, the uh, momentum in these weapons would be insane. We're scaling up to a very large size, and remember, weight scales up at a larger factor to size, and so the, the weight and mass is increasing huge, and so the forces we're dealing with is off the scale, and uh, like no matter how strong a robot is, getting a giant sword-like club to the head, that would have to loosen some bolts, you would expect, okay? Knock her out, some of them, you know, internal computings, whatever, and they wouldn't want to be hit like that. Because this is the interesting thing when it comes to giant robots, anything that you can pick up of a decent size is gonna do, a, you know, measurable amount of damage, right? If it can stay together when being picked up. Because this is another pet peeve I have with like giant robots and stuff like that, is that they pick up things that would not have the structural integrity to hold together at all. Uh, best example I can think of is again, Pacific Rim, where one of the Jaegers picks up like a battleship or a, a giant boat of some kind and uses it like a baseball bat. You know what happened if you tried to pick up a boat from that end like that? It would just snap in half and you'd break off the tip. I mean, there's no structural strength for it to hold together like that. Most of it is hollow on the inside, all right? This is the thing. Buildings, boats and things like that, it's, it's they're hollow with like, you know, a web of interconnected hallways and rooms and stuff like that with only main struts to hold it together under the stresses it usually operates, which is just downward stress from gravity. That's kind of the main thing. Not always on it, like it'll snap so easily. So picking up anything would probably not mean you could use it as a weapon. If your robot is like two to three stories high, okay, granted, you could probably pick up a tree, a solid hunk of wood, and that would maintain, you know, it would hold together when you're holding it, but as soon as you hit something, it'll probably break really quickly. Same with cars. But when you look at the robots the size of Jaegers, all right, you know, like the size of a skyscraper and things, there's nearly nothing you could pick up that would hold together unless you have something purposely built for it and it would need to be built out of those really advanced materials just to hold together and withstand the stresses of combat. And if you have something like that, then yes, nearly anything of that size is gonna do huge damage. And so why not go with something a bit more versatile, give you a few options, a sword-like weapon would work well. Here's another interesting question to consider about giant robots, and that is the fact that certain giant robots use shields. And again, I'm kind of looking at Gundam series now, because many Gundams from the Gundam series use shields, even the most classic Gundam uses a shield. And I'm talking about actually handheld material shields, not energy shields, a material medieval almost style shield. First question is, if you're using energy shields that are able to withstand projectile weapons, if they can't withstand the melee weapons, it might be very logical to have some type of material that can withstand the melee weapons to some measure. But this is the weird, other weird question, right? This shield would have to be built out of some good, strong material to withstand any types of these melee attacks. And if you have a material that can withstand those types of attacks, why on earth isn't the giant robot plated with that material in the first place to withstand those attacks? Like seriously, these Gundams are using shields to block all these projectile things. Why isn't the Gundam made out of whatever the shield is made out of? I don't understand. If you say it is made out of that material, then what on earth is the purpose of the shield, okay? If it's that the shield can only withstand a certain amount of attacks and then it breaks, and then the, the armor can only withstand stand a certain amount of tax, that might have some logic. Just, uh, okay, there's a certain level of resistance it has, and the shield is just like a stop gap to uh, take as many hits before it gets destroyed. But my kind of criticism is that the shields rarely ever get destroyed. In so many animes and stuff like that in Gundam series, I don't remember the shields getting destroyed, like ever. And so again, What's the purpose of the shields? Because you just plate the, the robot in them. So there are those contradictions to consider in regards to shields. And dependent on whatever the conclusions are to those parameters are, if uh, the material is invulnerable, you don't need shields at all. There's no point. If the material is only somewhat effective, it can resist it. Okay, the shield is going to get destroyed, but then you would want to be internally consistent with how strong the armor plating is on the robot, because then the armor plating should be degraded and blown apart at the same rate the shield is. But if that is the case, I can see a measure of logic to shields. Again, if the shield is capable of blocking certain things that the energy shield can't, because you would only have melee weapons in the first place, if you have some type of energy shield that nullifies projectile weapons, making melee weapons the needed tactic to be employed. And unfortunately, there's no like definitive answer what would be the absolute best weapon. I mean, 
Having said that, energy weapons really are the, the go-to. I mean, you don't have any of the material weaknesses and stuff, material limitations and things. Uh, depending on how powerful these energy weapons are, like energy swords and things, they could be far more devastatingly effective against other, you know, armor-plated robots than other things. And so if this energy sword can, like, chop through full, like, you know, robots and stuff like that, well, then you'd want an energy weapon to defend, or even an energy shield. Well, what type of energy shields? Because, uh, like, this energy weapon is supposed to get three energy shields that protects against projectile weapons, but then you have a handheld energy shield that can protect against... So there's some contradictions here to consider. But I do like energy weapons as kind of the final answer here, but do share what you think would work best in the comment sections below. I have a feeling I've missed a couple of things to consider, so I look forward to reading them. I hope you come up with some cool ideas. I can't wait to hear them or read them. And, of course, I can't wait to see you in the next episode, so until then, Fair